Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Two Tamers Talk. Jesse, we're back. We're back. We tried to have someone else on, but it didn't work out. So people it's me are and busy. You. People are busy. Why are we not busy? <laughs> All we're the not time. busy because I don't know. You are, you are busy. I'm pretty busy. I'm not days, busy yeah. at all. I'll be here every week if if duty calls. Duty always calls, sir. That's right. Jesse, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's been uh, it's been a busy week. It's been an interesting week. Mm-hmm. I know you played this past weekend in some regionals. We got uh, we got some locals behind us on Sunday. It's true. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of a interesting week for Digimon. This is true. Yeah the the regional happened and uh, the BT15 format marches on. Uh, a lot of people are starting, and we'll talk about that when yeah. we get into the the results. A lot of people are starting to get a little tired about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a, a particular uh, level three Digimon is kind of getting on people's <laughs> nerves, um, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, uh, formats that are extremely diverse are pretty fun. Like if you think about the BT13 format, yeah. it, was, it was pretty fun because there was diversity, uh, uh, not only in decks but in play styles. Oh, they were all different. Um, yeah. Uh, this this format has. Has diversity in terms of decks, mm-hmm. but not really diversity in terms of play style. I agree. Uh, I it's, agree. It's, it's very aggressive. It's very, very go fast. Uh, deck, it's very yeah. swingy. It's very memory gainy. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm looking at some I'm looking at some old classic decks, trying to figure out what I'm going to play on mm-hmm. uh, the upcoming uh, Ultimate Cup this weekend. Yeah. Looking at some some old classics and and some stuff that's strong right now. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to end up on, but it'll. Whatever I play will be really good. And you have until <laughs> what tonight, according when this thing, uh, yeah, when this I'll, airs, I'll, to when, decide. For the fans watching at the moment, I have selected a deck. Okay. Um, it's Wednesday right now. I haven't picked anything yet. Yeah. But there are some contenders. So, uh, what'd you play on this weekend? This yeah, last weekend? we had uh, we had a regional. We'll, we'll get into the res- the results proper in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Justin and I played. Uh, we both brought Armor Rush. Okay. Uh, you've seen it on the channel now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh. Uh, a few adjustments have been made to the deck. Uh, we ended up going, or we ended up going in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up playing. I ended up sticking with the Amphimon Ace that we talked about. Yeah. Uh, Amphimon Ace uh, set is a six cost Mega. Yep. Uh, and can also blast on on level fives. But sure, we used it as a one cost cheaper Kakaidas Breath most yeah. of the time. <laughs> uh, we were playing it. Trash, blue cards in your hand to strip sources, bounce something without sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, never activating its when attacking because there are no Jellymons in the deck. Right. But it was a six cost Kakaitis Breath that uh, bounced something and then landed an 11k beater. Sounds good. Uh, and so we ended up <laughs> playing that. I went to two Death X um, because uh, uh, in preparation of Numemon. Yeah. Um, if Numemon could get into uh, a super wide board and we couldn't bounce it in time. Uh, Death X was the answer, as well as bouncing cards like Garymon, Pitch One, Draw Two, yeah. uh, Ukomon, uh, uh, and, and anything else. Like uh, bouncing those didn't really feel feel great, mm-hmm. uh, but going into Death X and killing them all felt fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Justin had a poor showing. He ended up dropping round four. Oof. Um, I. Uh, stuck out the whole tournament. I ended X and two, Ooh, okay. uh, which was good enough. Still a for, great result. Yeah, good enough for 39th. Uh, okay. I was in the top 64 somewhere. So an extra event pack in the mail. Hell yeah. Uh, so that'll be good. Looking for sleep modes and sleep modes only. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> That's the, such a oh, Omekamons. Sh- Omekas are, okay. yeah. are good. But yeah. uh, not looking for Dark Knights or Sun and Moon level fives. Yeah. Or Crescent Mon. Oh, no. Yeah. Ga- uh, uh, Gamma Mon level Gamma five, Mon yeah. Level five, no yeah. sir, or Dark Knight later. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. Uh, briefly go over the matchups. Uh, round one was a new Maimon player, and I lost. Uh, round two, start next one is always kind of a yeah. Start. It's like oh, Losing, you got that huge hill to climb afterwards. Like, uh, um, round two was a Davis player, and I won. Okay, uh, you can't lose that match you, with, with they, Magnus. They play, they play level five, bounce it. They promote the level five swing. It lives. Bounce, bounce. it next turn. <laughs> All their no, aces overflow four. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, they just they never get to an ace. The oh, level fives yeah. are always in their hand. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know, the the twelve cost option uh, says reduce the play cost for 
uh, Dave was in trash. And they're never there. And they're never in trash throws in their hand. Yeah. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, round three was against Old Force. Oh. Uh, ended up beating them. Uh, Any interesting techs I need to know about in that deck? <laughs> he was playing EX3 Baby Doman. Uh, oh, yeah. Unsuspend gain memory egg. Uh, unsuspend gain memory. Or gain, gain DP, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And then as well like as it. the EX3 uh, Dracomon, which searches a Dramon and an and a Examon. So his his Davises would grab two cards sometimes. Yeah, theoretically, sometimes. A, as well as uh, another all turns 1K, uh, 2K, 1K DP buff. Yeah. So um, in uh, in response to the Buka, yeah. going so, with some little bit of yeah, DP. So I was like, yeah. oh, that's pretty interesting. I think you just play the two cost type mm-hmm. E-Tamer and call it good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, round four was red hybrids. Uh, I ended up winning that. We think uh, the armor rush does really well under red hybrids. Par- part of the reason why we wanted to play it. You put out a lot of blockers. You put out a lot of 7K blockers. Yeah. Very awkward. Yeah. Uh, round five uh, was against Gabu Bond, uh, which was sick. Gabu Bond was, uh, was X1 at this point in the tournament. Had a nail biter uh, 2 1 victory. This person uh, so ran was, into the only other person in the tournament that knows yeah, what those cards do. Yeah, probably. I was so I was so because he was he was playing and he flipped Wanyaman and yeah. I was like, okay, this could be most blue decks. Yeah. Uh and then he went Gabu, uh the uh not the Bond Gabu, but uh the SR. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, probably Melga. Melga, yeah. Uh and then he played BT6 Matt, and I was like, oh, it's Bond. And he's like, Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay. And then the other thing I wanted to shout out from him is he's playing BT14 Gessomon. There you go. The squid. Yeah. So that was my card of the week many moons ago. That's the one with uh, that awesome when attacking. When, when attacking strip a source, five? bounce a level five without yeah. sources. And I was like, okay. He's like, you're the first person I played against that knew what this card did. That's really good against and ace I cards. Like, <laughs> I was like, dude, that card is the truth. Yeah. Uh, so cool to see that. Um, uh, blah blah blah. So bond, and then the next round, I lost to a red hybrids player. Okay. Um. Uh, so obviously, red hybrids will sometimes just kill you, and yep. that's how the deck goes. Yep. Uh. <laughs> round round after that was against another Nume, uh, and I ended up taking that. Finished nice. the tournament e- tournament X and two. Nice. If there was going to be another round, uh, you could uh, have been in contention for could, could have been in contention yeah. for a top thirty two. Got yeah. some of those. Some of those egg sleeves. Dude, those look, are so... They look great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, but the uh, top four table, there was four undefeated. Mm-hmm. Uh, the player that won, we'll talk about in a sec, but then the, uh, the other two draw. Uh, so it ended with uh, just those seven rounds. So oh, five, okay. and two, five and two performance for Armor Rush. Super cool. Seven rounds? That's not too seven bad. Seven rounds, yeah. If you uh, if you haven't seen that deck profile, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, really fun way to play Armor Rush. Really aggressive. Super aggressive. Fights for the board super hard. Uh, super fun deck. Yeah. Does always insanely well at locals. Yeah. We <laughs> have, well, we've got a couple of people on it, which is something that we actually wanted to talk about a little bit. Yeah. Is the sort of the sort of state of, uh, of BT15. Yeah. Uh, before we get into that... Sure. Let's talk about some positives. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. So positives wise, guys. Um, big shout out. Wanted to say thank you. Uh, we didn't do it last week. Kind of, uh, we were kind of in the midst of a few different things, and mm-hmm. we weren't sure where the numbers were, but uh, we hit three thousand subs. Yeah, three K. It's awesome. We're about a year and a half in, and uh, yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it. We appreciate every sub, every view, uh, every comment. Mm-hmm. Positive, negative, whatever you guys got, throw them all at us. We That's appreciate true. all the feedback. Uh, in response to that, um, we have a buddy of the channel, Jacob. He's been on the channel multiple times, and mm-hmm. he did us a solid and set up an awesome Discord That's for right. Digital Gate Studios. So not to take away from Wayward, because we are still uh, we still love that uh, Discord channel, and we're still in that's our locals. That's our bread and butter. Yep. We're there every week, at least once a week, at if not once. twice yep. or three times. Uh, so make sure you check out. I'll have uh, links to both our Discord and uh, Waywards uh, in the description of this video. But please come join the Discord. Hang yeah, out. Yeah, come say hi. Yeah, there's some tables you guys can play at. Uh, we have a couple cool little sub channels in there. If you guys want to request some videos, uh, you can jump in there and shoot us your requests. That way it's a little bit easier than... Um, Coming through comments, if you guys make them a little bit later, then sometimes we yeah, don't we don't we catch miss them. them. Yeah, so uh, jump in Discord, tag us in comments, whatever you guys want. So thank you once again. Super but don't awesome. be weird. 
Yeah, we don't will be weird. get you out of there. Yeah, no weirdos. <laughs> All right. So this format. So that's the good news. Yeah. Bad news. It's not really bad news. It's, it's not just, bad news. It's just it's just a long format, man. I think it uh, is a long format. We're starting to see. I don't want to say dissension, but uh, a little bit less consistency in uh, some attendance. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some people are showing up once every other week. Some people showing up, uh, you know, once every few weeks now. I think some people are starting to kind of tire of this format. What do you think? Yeah, I think that I was talking with this uh, with some some players. We were were doing some testing for uh, upcoming regional or upcoming Ultimate Cup. And... uh, one thing that's been interesting about the sort of uh, the formats that I've been in that have been clearly unhealthy, mm-hmm. uh, looking at uh, Black War Greymon X uh, and looking at Beelzemon, I think were the two least healthy formats I've been a part of. Yeah, uh, Someone who came in at the tail end of the BT10 format, mm-hmm. didn't really experience the full crossheart thing, yeah. wasn't around for four Ice Wall, Gabu Bond, or Blue Hybrids, you know, wasn't around for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Since I've been playing, those two formats, I think, have been the least healthy. Yeah. They were formats that were completely centralized around uh, the deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Black War Greymon, obviously, if you didn't have answer to a single stack, uh, didn't have answer to outracing said single stack... Uh, or something, then you or couldn't. You probably couldn't play that deck in that format. Yeah, uh, at a you, competitive level. If you is. didn't have an answer to all of your tamers being deleted, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beelzemon. If you could not outrace Beelzemon, yeah. or did not have immunity from deletion effects, yeah. couldn't really play that deck. Yeah. Uh, in that in that format, and so when you look at the BT uh, fifteen format, mm-hmm. uh, diversity is quite high. Yeah. Uh, in terms of deck choice. Um, uh, but the deck style diversity is very minimal. Yeah, uh, it's at a competitive it's, level. Yeah, at sure. a competitive level, it's very aggressive, uh, and it's all centered around one card, which is interesting. Promo Ukoman yeah. has completely changed uh, the landscape of Digimon, so much so, Jesse. Yep. That I went back to a past episode of Two Tamers Talk. We called it the Hit Podcast, episode fifty three. Yeah. And you know what we said? <laughs> I watched the clip. We said, this card is really interesting. You can go Ukoman in the raising, turn one, or yeah. you can go rookie. We were a little off. Yeah, we yeah. could go rookie in the raising and hard play Ukoman. Yeah. And then turn two, if they choke you to one, you can promote Ukoman, gain and hatch, evolve a rookie, and then play Louie, and it's still your turn. Yeah. And you have three rookies on the board. The first thing I said was... This would be really good for D Brigade. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, I th- I think that's the best way to play D Brigade is yeah. Rookie Rush. I think so too. The second deck I said was Red Hybrids, oh, God. which I don't even remember saying that, but yeah. right on the money with that. Yeah. Uh, and then it's and then I said I talked about Jagamon BT eleven BT twelve because yeah. I love that card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then I was like. It, I don't know what it is, but there's going to be some Rookie Rush deck that's going to abuse this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're like, yeah, it could be with with uh, memory gain options, or it could just be Rookie Rush. Mm-hmm. And so New Maimon New fills Maimon. the slot. Yep. Um, but uh, the, the, the wonder that I have regarding this format is, what does it look like uh, if nothing else changes but Ukomon to one? Um, and it's pretty interesting, because New Maimon, I don't think falls off a I don't cliff, think so either. No, uh, no. In the same way that uh, other restricted decks uh, have. Like, yeah. for example, when when uh, people talk about Alphamon losing Doru Greymon, yeah. you just never saw it anywhere ever again yeah. for a long for time. For a little while, yeah, yeah. Or for a long time, right. Uh, but I think if you take Ukomon out of Numemon, uh, clearly it's slower. Yeah. Uh, but it's still a Tier 2 contender at for the sure. very least. I think so, too. Yeah. Um, but, but it slows, it slows down. it down. It, slow, I think. it slows down Numemon. Yeah. It slows down Red Hybrid. It slows down Armor Rush. Yeah. Uh, it slows down, you know, it's so, and purple decks are starting to abuse it with uh, with that BT15 Demi Mara draw two egg. Draw two egg, yeah. And so, anyway. Yeah, I've seen it in Mirage. I've seen it in yeah. everything. Lugamon. Lugamon. It's in that. It's in Belfamon now. It's in all. It's in everything. Yeah. And it's, it's like, at what point does, does Bandai start looking at this card? Because I've personally, I mean, you know, I've talked to you about it. It's just, it's one of those things where if you're a fan of a deck that needs a li- like two turns to set up. Yeah. 
It's really annoying. Yes. It's really hard. I, and I'm not complaining and saying, like, hey, like, you should tailor to the decks that are a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. If it's a fast format, it's a fast format. But when you start seeing this card in all of the decks. Well, and, and another thing I was talking about, the, the round one Numemon I lost to at the, mm-hmm. uh, at the regional, uh, open, I lost 2-0, opened both games, Uko, Numemon, pass, turn two, promote Ukomon, Ukomon and the Raising. Yeah. Any deck... If you put four Ukamons in any deck and you opened Uko, turn one, turn two Uko, yeah. you have won that game. You're almost so always. Fast. Yeah. It's it's like, okay, they didn't out a rookie turn one, lose the game on the spot. Yeah. Um, and so it's just uh it's too much value off of a free rookie. Um That's a big reason why I've been playing security controls. Yeah. Because I've literally been murder their bolt board until they're out of eggs and yes. then i can win right exactly if i don't tie yeah that's really the only thing that's that's helped and me against, uh, uh the the thing about it is uh they're for sure bandai i give credit to bandai uh as much as i can because yeah. i like the game and i like yeah. the decisions that they make uh i'm sure that they have been aware of it since japanese nationals yeah uh when ukoman was top two mm-hmm. uh with and at that point, they're in the BT16 format. With the new ones. So they had eight Ukoman. Yeah. Uh, and so the eight Ukoman is one's the memory gain, the other one's the search. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I, I do believe... I can't wait. I do believe that the upcoming ban and restricted list will happen probably before the beginning observer format. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the reason that we have not seen uh, such a ban and restricted list at this point is because of how vocal people were uh, in opposition to the last ban and restricted list uh, so? announced before uh, oh. EX5 and BT15 were yeah. uh, legal. Or, uh, BT, yeah, BT15 yeah. with the yeah, Apoquimon, yeah. the Anubismon, uh, and then both pieces well, of the because they have uh, all these events the planned. So, the, I mean, all the events are already in stone. Yeah. So they have to try and strategically place these yeah. ban lists. And so yeah. I, think, uh, I think it will be coming soon. I think it very well could be uh, a two card ban list uh with uko uko you think so um i think i think it very well could be um i don't know man see i i'm i'm kind of in the other camp where i think that uh bandai is still a corporation and they yes. like to make money yes and they make a lot of money off premium bandai stuff yeah that's the other that's and the other interesting thing we have ukoman coming in premium it bandai is, sets and premium you know there bandai. are people like jeff that uh <laughs> buy Tons of those yes. things, you know, that like to have the play sets. Yeah. So do they want people to have that much buyer's remorse? Yeah. And, it's hey, true. I bought, you know, two play sets of Ukamons because they go in all these very competitive decks. Yeah. And then come June, when they actually get dropped off at your door, they're all limited to they're one. All limited to one. This is true. I don't know. It is hard to say. Um, it's hard to say. Yeah. But uh, I... I... I I believe that Ukamon will be on the ban restricted list. I think the question is just when. Yeah. Um, because it's a four of in like eight different competitive decks at this point. Yeah. Uh, which is unprecedented. And decks that were already competitive without yes. it. Like- yes, it's true. <laughs> Um, so that that's that's sort of the the Ukamon spiel. One that's- other thing I do want to say about ban and restricted list. Sure. For the fans watching, I have said various controversial statements about the ban and restricted list sure if you want to know my <laughs> ideal ban and restricted list let us know in the comments or in discord or on discord because yeah. uh we could make a video out of that that would be fun yeah the, how many cards are in ban and restricted list oh, what? i don't know 20 something like that something yeah. like 20 yeah. mine would be i think 80 really with semi limits and and oh, and okay. a lot of cards at zero gotcha so if you want to see that uh let me know because we'll we'll cook it up <laughs> Gotcha. I've got some strong opinions about the about the super rares in this game. All Let right. me tell you. Well, on that note, uh, let's get into some winners of some uh, sure. awesome regionals. So we're gonna talk about a couple because Mesquite, of, Texas. Mesquite, Texas. So we talked up. We kind of referenced this last week yes. because this was over, but we didn't have all the final deck lists as true. of recording last week. So we did want to jump into some of these lists because these are really fun. And I really wanted to point out some of the differences between um, in-person representation and online representation. Yes, because it's very different. It's very different. And we we kind of experienced that a little bit at Pasadena. We did, yeah, for sure. Which was cool. Um, so we have the winner. We have, of course, so Numamon. We'll just throw it out there. Numamon took both of yes. the tournaments. Yes. So we'll look at some differences in both and, decks. And uh, well, 
before we talk about differences, we can talk about similarities. For sure. Uh, both were playing uh, nigh identical lists. Um, Pretty playing, close. Playing purple base. Uh, we talked about the Zwart defeat uh, Chimeramon strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, uh, this is, this is uh, pretty clearly uh, solidifying itself as the way to play Numemon. Yeah. Um, it takes advantage of the best draw engine in the game, mm -hmm. uh, which is purple. It takes advantage of the best memory gain, uh, the cheapest memory gain in the game, which is Structure Deck, uh, Gabu and Agu, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then Ukomon. Uh, it has the best uh, floodgate going right now, which is Gazimon. Yep. Uh, and then it has all of the aggression that Numemon is able to punch out, which is uh, a bunch of level fours, uh, that standard level five lineup with the added Chimeramon, uh, and then a Zulong Ace. And then the fours wart defeats. And the fours wart defeat, either for the security effect or for uh, filling up the hand with Demi Mera. Yeah, it's crazy. But nothing else to say about this list. Congratulations to the player. Uh, and then we have Belfamon. This is something that you kind of called a few weeks ago yes. on the pod where you were uh, talking about Belfamon could easily sneak into top 16, so, and here so, it is. Something that I've been talking about a lot is uh, the strength of Belfamon, mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily, like, Belfamon's sort of the example I've been using, Yeah. Uh, but it's just sort of, Belfamon is a placeholder for decks that have been good in the past. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Belfamon, uh, obviously the... the uh, the elephant in the room is Ukomon. Yep. Uh, taking advantage of the draw to egg. It goes uh, everywhere. It's yep. going to go everywhere. Um, but in interestingly enough, Ukomon in Belfamon is something that we even saw uh, twice at Nats. Yeah. So two people were playing at Nats. Uh, the interesting thing about it is obviously you can go uh, Ukomon turn one and then either play a Tamer or uh, or uh, play a Floodgate or even play out that, uh, that promo Raremon. Yeah. Uh, promote Ukomon and threaten Belfamon turn two better than you ever could before mm -hmm. um, because you can either go Gizmon AT on top or Gizmon AT, delete the Ukomon. You're going to be at two at the least because yeah. of the Ukomon's ability. Uh, and then uh, you can do draw two trash two off the Gizmon. You can do pitch one draw two off of a Demimera. Uh, and then from there, you can either hard play Astamon, use Karata effect. Uh, whatever the case, uh, to go into Belfamon turn two. What do you think about that Kaiser Leo in there? What is that? It's hybrid. It's the hybrid. And what else? No, no other ability, right? Uh, retail. It's uh, right, but you, you have, have, have to Koichi. have the thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just their hybrid. It's just hybrid, good. and then it can uh, slide Evo on top of uh, Ogremon and Raremon. Yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, I always uh, like but, hybrids for game. But it's always interesting when you can find room to sneak them yeah, into decks. Yeah, Uk Ukomon is really good in this deck. Uh, triple Death X, uh, an answer to uh, Numemon. To Numemon. Uh, that Gilmon is uh, really interesting. This BT5 Gilmon. Yeah. Uh, if on deletion, if deleted by an effect, gain a memory. Yeah. Uh, so that's a perfect target for your Astamon. Uh, that's a perfect target for Rage Mode to unsuspend, gain a memory. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing else to say. Uh, congratulations to the player. Yep. Now we have a Mega Gargo list. We I had a feeling one of these was going to sneak yes. in. Yes, Mega Gargomon. So. Uh, the uh, the green structure deck is is extremely slept on. Yeah. Uh, these cards are uh, and people. Well, I should say, I shouldn't say slept on anymore. I think after the past two weekends, people are really starting to take note. I think so too. Yeah. Um. Uh. Mega Gar Mega Gargomon Ace. Is so good that card into is a menace. so many decks. Yeah, uh, it's good into red hybrids. Takuya can't evolve, can't go into your hybrids. Yeah, uh, it's good into uh, any blue deck that unsuspends. Yeah, uh, it's good into Numemon. Stun two Numemons, save yourself a turn. Yeah, uh, it's it's good into so many decks. Um, Can you imagine if this card was out like during the cross? Oh, dude, Oof. yeah, Crossheart versus Mega Gargo, that is hard. Lock down all the Taikis. Lock down all the Taikis, <laughs> no Digicross. The game is lost. Yeah. Um, uh, but this player taking advantage of some cool stuff, obviously a ton of Terrier Mons. Yeah. Uh, very strong. Fire Rocket uh, for that extra aggression with your uh, armor forms is quite good. That's the Alliance Slotmon too, right? Yeah, one yeah. Alliance Slotmon. Um, Heaven's Judgment, a card I've liked for a long time. If you're into... Uh, Rapidmon, it's a seven cost minus 18k, yeah, uh, which is hard to beat. Uh, and then two big missile, uh, two double type, three double typhoon, uh, a play set of trainings, and a bunch of tamers. Yeah, 
<coughs> not much else to say about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I love this. Uh, let's go next. We have armor. armor so this is kind of uh, concurrent with what you and Justin are playing, with some different caveats. Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, very similar. Uh, a very similar uh, rookie lineup, uh, running with the uh, fourteen V Mons and then four Ukos. Yeah, uh, we opted away from the jamming V in in favor of more search. Uh, but jamming V makes a little bit more sense when paired with the BT eight Magnamon. For sure. So you promote swing jamming, go into Magnamon and restand. It's quite good. Um, they're playing obviously a much more controlling list. Uh, yeah. They opted for triple death X, uh, one full moon meteor impact, and then one uh, two of those heavens judgment. Yeah, with so, the Magnus. If you guys don't, if you guys haven't messed with this Magnex anybody, it's, it's very very good against Numamon because you can redirect infinite yeah, they, attacks into they, it. They are uh, nine wide with uh, with Uko or with Numemons. Uh, if they don't have an answer to Magnamon X in the form of uh, Waru Monzemon D Digivolve or yeah. uh, Monzemon X DP minus, uh, they are going to swing nine times and die nine times. Yeah. Uh, so that's quite good. Yep. Uh, but uh, another deck taking full advantage of Ukomon uh, and that promo Davis, promo Vimon. It's quite strong. Three Death X. And three Death X is quite good. So if, <laughs> if you're one of those people that throws shade <laughs> throws shade at the uh, the Death X in some of our decks, I mean... Hey, we put we put one, sometimes two. two. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding with the, with the Death X. I mean, it's in these top decks. It's it's a good card, guys. It's a good card. I don't, I don't card. know what to tell you. It's coming in LM2. Uh, two or which, three. Which three. is it's in... two or three? Two, two, right? I don't know. I think it's just two. It's which the one that comes with Chaos X. <laughs> it's the one that comes with Chaos X alt art. Finally. <laughs> and then uh, that's in that's in EX6, I think. I think so. I hope. Hope so, it's soon. Uh, so see you in the, see you in you'll the have another You'll have another crack at the Death Xs. So. <coughs> but they are making a return. We saw a dip in them for quite a while. It's and just now true. with uh, Numamon, Armors, all these uh, decks that play a ton of Digimon. Yeah. They're back. They're back. And, Go uh, figure. If I'm not mistaken, I was looking at some prices. I'm pretty sure BT9 is the highest price box right now. Oh, with sealed? A, with a sa- uh, side from, I think, BT1, just because it's old. It's hard to find, yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure that X I think BT9 is the way. X Record's like 110 right now. Yeah, right. Pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, okay, so that kind of So that's wraps Mesquite. Up. Yeah, that's that the was, in-person that was in then, Texas. That uh, was at time of, time of uh, you watching this is two weeks ago. Yeah. So I wanted to get down, because we do have, for the one that you played in, we have the breakdown for the entire tournament. Yeah, not just the top 64, but yeah, the, the entire, entire rundown. Thing. So this is something we kind of talked about on a previous podcast, and um, where we're kind of like, oh, it's the Wild West, you can see. But it's clear there is cream that is separating. Yes, you know? it is. The top decks are sort of uh, crystallizing at the top. Yep. And uh, it's the two decks that take... The best advantage of Ukomon. Yeah. And so that's Red Hybrids and Numemon. Yep. And uh, so if you look at it, I mean, that's almost 50, no, a little less than 50% of the whole tournament, probably. Yeah. Because there's how many? No, there, there was 380 entrants in the tournament. So, so it's, a, it's uh, a little less than a it's third. It's a little more than a quarter. Yeah. yeah. Which is a lot. <laughs> Which is a lot. Yeah. 54 Red Hybrid players and 44 Numemon players. Yeah. It's, Quite a few. You're gonna see yeah, a little the, bit of both. The bad thing is, is that these decks are clearly too strong. Yeah. The good thing is, uh, for the more competitive players, if you want to know what to expect, you now know what to expect. Yeah. If you are two and zero, uh, if you were like, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna play next round, you're going to be playing against Numemon or Red Hybrid. <laughs> but in <laughs> the end, is, you're playing against Ukomon. But in the end, you're playing against Ukomon. Which is why you start to see cards like Digimon. <coughs> Digimon Emperor, Skyrocket. It's true. Everyone's playing those in certain decks. Yeah. Security Control plays two or three now. Yep. You see them in a lot of decks. This is true. So, but yeah, it's really interesting to look at this list because you do start to see some decks. Like, uh, it's cool to see Deva's armor. Well, and so that that's that's the sort of that's the sort of counterpoint is yeah. uh, decks that are good against Numemon and Red Hybrids are starting to. Elevate themselves. Yeah, Mirage Galgamon is making a huge resurgence I saw because that, yeah. bouncing stuff that has on deletion effects is quite good. Yeah, if they promote their BT uh, seven Flame Mon and then go on top of it with BT twelve Agunimon, swing and live, and it gets bounced. 
the Red Hybrids players lost the game. Yeah. Because it doesn't get on deletion play a Flame Mon. It doesn't get on deletion play a Takuya. And they lost the Tamer. And they lost, the, well, you know, this is bounce, from, yeah. from the raising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, really oh, yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. If they are uh, if they are playing against Deva and they want to swing a bunch, get countered, lose the board, uh, and then once we're into Fang Long Mon, uh, Nui Mon is lost. Yeah. So that's sort of the rationale for Deva's. Armor Rush. 7k blockers, bounce all your guys. Very good. Well, Make ten, a Gargo ten, Mon. 10% of those 19 were you and Justin. <laughs> so there you go. Shout outs. <laughs> Uh, Mega Gargomon, <clears throat> same idea. Blue Flare, same yeah. idea. Stun all their guys. Yeah. So that's sort of the the interesting thing about a meta over centralized around mm -hmm. a few decks. Yeah. Uh, is its counter starts to pro proliferate. Pretty my, interesting. My uh, I was interested in this fifty three other. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that means there's less well, than when seven you, represented. When you there. look at these decks, it's kind of difficult to think of decks that are not. <laughs> on here, I can think of a couple. So yeah. obviously, we think of Old Force is the first thing we yeah. think of. Uh, yellow hybrids is something I thought of. I know people were playing yellow hybrids yep. at this tournament. Uh, Beelzemon uh, is Beelze not on this list. Beelzemon, Belfamon, uh, Diaboromon. Uh, I'm sure somebody brought it. Diaboromon. I'm sure somebody mm -hmm. brought. It. There's got to be at least one or two players. This is true. Um, we saw a Mega Zoo list a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Om Omni Mega Zoo. This is yeah. true. I'm sure somebody uh, tried that. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a million different... Uh, I mean, there could be some um, Dark Knight in there. Yeah, Dark Knight, Crossheart, hard to say. Bagramon. Bagramon. Old Force, for sure. Old it's got to be in there sure. somewhere. A couple. A couple That's of us right. got to represent. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so let's talk about... Uh, we'll look at the first place list. Uh, yeah. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out. No, it is... Uh it is nearly the uh, same list as uh, the Mesquite Regional. Uh, minus one Chimeramon, minus one Platinum Numemon, minus one Zwart Defeat, plus two Venusmon, uh, plus one Merciful Mode and Ruin Mode. Yep. And that's the deck. That's pretty Congratulations good. Congratulations to Dan Vang. Dan Vang. Shout outs. That is a OG player. Yeah, it is. The next is Bunnies list. And does this look familiar, Jesse? <laughs> we actually it's had to double check we this. The, I was like, damn, that is quite similar. It's the same player. Steve that Lee. Steve Lee. Shout out to Steve Lee. Uh, he topped at both tournaments. He topped in Mesquite and took it right back online and did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, switched the eggs around, switched Gummy for the Nyaromon mm -hmm. as the five of. Took out that uh, that structure deck Lotmon. Yeah. And uh, those were the changes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's always awesome to see someone just... Obviously, is an awesome pilot of this deck. Yes, very consistent as well. It doesn't seem like a deck you could just pick up and top at a tournament. With no, it. for <laughs> like sure. You not. definitely need to know what you're doing. Yes, know know your counters. So um, Bielzmon. Okay, this is another deck that I think is in the used to be good and is now good again. Okay. Um, obviously, a lot of deletion effects Tons, uh, in yeah. this deck over and so over and over. So if you're again. swinging uh, with a wide board, you know. You you may not be dying in the battle, uh, but you might be hitting an option. Yeah. Uh, so if we see from this list, ten kill spells in the options, uh, which a lot of decks can't get away with. Yeah. Uh, but Bielzmon obviously can. Yep. Uh, and then maxing out those those mill effects, except for the EX two Bielz. So that is uh, for Wizard, for Deathslinger, uh, yeah. for Rivals Barrage. Uh, it's a very menacing deck. Uh, if you are not ready for this deck, it will run you down. Uh, Obviously slower than it did in the uh, BT12 format, yeah. but still extremely competitive. Yeah, if you wait too long, that X antibody will just trash rest security, and then you're That's done. That's right. Yep. Uh, so shout outs to the player. Yeah. Uh, once again, this was one of those <clears throat> uh, decks that's in that other category. So yes, yes. Big shout out. Most certainly. And, and then, then we have a fourth place. We have... Or not fourth. I think this was eighth. This yes, came in eighth. So yellow top, vaccine. Top eight yellow vaccine... Uh, I hesitate to call it yellow vaccine strictly, though. This is yeah. really like rapid mon vaccine. Yeah, it's really interesting. So uh, just sticking with the one Andromon secret rare, mm -hmm. one Gatomon, and then the rest of the level fours, two play sets of rapid mons. Yep. That card, that is so awesome to see because this card is insane. But if you're thinking about Numa mons and stuff like that, I mean, doing yes. wide, wide board DP wide minuses. Wide board DP minus. Pretty good. Swing at one with the new structure deck Rapid Mon. Swing at one, DP minus another. Uh, it's pretty good. And then, obviously, it's still alive. 
threaten yeah. that Magna Angemon ace or that Angewoman ace, minus the rest out. Gotta and, love then, the... and then Venusmon right on top of it. So and you're awesome. always threatening that uh, Gargo on top of the Rapids then, when yes. they swing too. It's so, so interesting. Scary. You can just random like in a yellow deck, just randomly go into green black Mega from a level four yeah. on your opponent's turn. Yep. That is insane. I mean, look at this. They're playing three Pillowmons and a Cute Mon too. Yep. So yep, that's that floodgate because obviously we aren't playing Digimon by effects uh, yep. in this deck anywhere. So we have. Uh, or a full ability to play out that Pillowmon. Well, it's nice to be able to play out the Pillowmon and then do your wideboard DP minus on your Numamon stuff. Yeah, and then they, so can't, they can't, they can't recur anything. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty it's good. It's really good. Really good. Uh, I think, and I think it's cool that yellow is sort of having its time in the sun mm -hmm. as not, not security control, but this is a yellow deck. This is a very yellow deck. This yeah. is a yellow deck, which is really cool because it's one of those colors that really struggled to find its identity, uh, since I've been playing, yeah. it's sort of been inherently tied to purple. Yeah. Uh, and I think it getting away from that and becoming its own deck is those, really cool to see. Those ace cards, man, they're so they're yeah. so menacing. They have like we we talk about Ma uh uh Zudomon Ace being mm -hmm. the best ace. Magna Angemon and Angewoman. Right behind it. Those are the top three. <laughs> yeah. Level for sure. fives for, for sure. sure. Yeah. So it's really cool to see those. Yeah, I'm really excited. So yeah, that's it. That's kind of some of the decks we wanted to talk about from these last two uh, regionals. Yeah. And it's really clear just, you know, kind of where we're at as a format and mm -hmm. not so much at locals because we're still kind of seeing some random stuff at locals, but we're also seeing representation from I these do, decks. I, 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 did, I did say tell to myself I was going to say this. Justin, friend of the channel and friend of mine, is has become somewhat of a plague at the locals because yeah. so we have a bunch of newer players yeah and for whatever reason they look to him for guidance <laughs> and uh the hallmark of a justin deck is two megas tops yep and 20 rookies and swing a bunch yeah uh, and so he's been we he's we've had a lot of players where justin and i've been talking about certain cards for a long time yeah and certain players have had somewhat resistant to them uh, and these new players are not at all. Nope. So Justin is like, hey, you should put four Ukomon in their deck. And they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, our locals has sort of been, uh, has been starting to take over uh, some of those uh, And then strategies. the next week he goes, why don't you play Death X in that deck? Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, then he, the next like, week they have you? four Ukos and two Death X. He's like, and 50 like, bucks? And they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Justin, stop. Yeah. Give them... <laughs> Give them Gallantmon or something. <laughs> People used to show up with Sakuyamon for their first yes, deck, and now they're true. showing up with Armor Rush. Rush. Yeah. It's like, uh-oh. Well, I mean, I'm always a fan of early success, though. I like yes. to see new people it, win. It, it makes them want to come back, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, we always want people to come back. Speaking of that, too, um, we didn't have a... We should have gave a good shout-out to... Uh, we had a, a guy from, what, Idaho? Jack War Jack Graymon? Graymon? Yeah. Shout out to Jack War Graymon. We have he, some people. He commented on the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have some people that show up from out of town and uh, they know Wayward City Games. They know Wayward City Games and they, That's uh, right. they come play Digimon. So we always like, if you're in the Pacific Northwest around the Portland area, we play Sundays at six o'clock and Wednesdays at six o'clock. Yeah. So, or and, if you're coming from New York and you're in Portland for some reason for yeah. upcoming anime convention yeah. or whatever, stop by Wayward. Yeah. If you didn't bring your deck, let us know. You can borrow one of oh, ours. Dude. Who cares? We'll we got, give you we'll give you something good. We'll give you something to play for sure. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I think we should probably jump into cards of the week. Sure. You ready? Yeah, All I right. got I got one if you want me to lead off. Yeah, you lead off. Because I've been uh I've been testing with a bunch of old decks. Mm -hmm. Uh and so old strategies uh that were really good. Uh a lot of them are ex antibody decks. Yeah. So I've been messing around with them. Uh Alphamon, I've been playing a little bit. Uh, I've been trying to make uh, Greymon Tribal uh, toolbox kind of thing work. Uh, I've been looking at Melga a decent amount uh, with that secret rare Melga and, and Melga X, obviously. Uh, the tying factor between all of them is X Antibody Protoform. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to shout out this card because it really is what X Antibody should have been this whole time. Yeah. Uh, the original X Antibody card uh, just has too much going on. Security effect, gain a memory, add the hand, uh, swing, not once per turn, evolve, unsuspend. It, it really meant it really created kind of uh, kind of a 
linear play, play style in terms of ex-antibody decks. And it destroyed Blue's identity. And it killed for Blue's identity <laughs> for a long uh, a long while. Uh it just had too much going on on one card. Sure. And the protoform card on the other hand uh is much more interesting because it does not say if you're a deck that swings multiple times in a game gain benefits. Yeah. Uh it's a card that says uh Go into an X antibody, reduced by one, and then when it dies, recover and grab back a piece. So it's a really cool card in terms of uh, the X antibody archetypes because it rewards you in a different way. It rewards sure. you for uh, building it in a slower way, a more defensive way, uh, but then it also gives you that ability to change your ratios around. Mm -hmm. So you can be pretty greedy with the ratios on these X-Antibody decks. Yeah. Uh, because if you get that protoform, uh, you can get the piece back that you're missing. Um, and uh, it's clearly a card that is not overtuned, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, is rewarding to the X-Antibody play style yeah. uh, in a way that I think the old X-Antibody should have been. So I wanted to shout out uh, protoform, a card I've put in just about every deck you can think of. Oh, you like having it? I think it's very, very good. Fair enough, fair enough. What do you got? Um, Mine's going to be weird because it's just a card I've been playing with lately. <laughs> I've been playing with uh, BT. Was this a card of the week for me back after regionals? The Joe Kiddo? Uh, I don't know. I have to check my spreadsheet. You have to check your spreadsheet. But uh, <laughs> I, I've put this back into Old Force, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, specifically in this format, uh, being able to target strip, play a tamer for two yeah. is, uh, is really fun. Um, I'm trying some synergy stuff. Stay tuned to the channel. If this deck works out, I'll put it on the channel. If not, it's just something I've been playing with. Um, I really like this card. It kind of prolongs your turns if you're doing mm -hmm. some fun stuff. Um, really good out of security in certain situations. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not a lot to say about it until I practice more with it. But right now, yeah. it's kind of my uh, it's my tamer of choice. Inheritables keep getting stronger. So does Joe Kiddo. Yeah, for sure. I know there's not a lot of room for it in a lot of blue decks, but mm. uh, that's the best part about all force. Is there's tons of room for tamers. You yes. just got to pick and choose which ones you want. So uh, that's going to be it, guys. Let's uh, now let's talk about next week. Sure. I have no idea what's going on next week. No, I don't either. <laughs> We've, we're gonna we're gonna have ultimate cup results. Yeah. Uh, we might have starting to get uh, reveals for BT seventeen. I maybe don't know. maybe we'll, we'll have something well i mean the structure decks are almost done right if not they're not done yet they're no. almost done oh yeah we have to finish with the structure decks. Yeah, that's yeah. true i know we got a new uh falcomon a green one today birds cool green birds um but yeah no, there's some more cool stuff coming we'll, yeah. we'll have a good episode for you next week i don't know yeah. who's gonna be on it maybe no. me and you maybe if it's me and you that's the way it's supposed to be there you go um so yeah once again jump into our discord jump into wayward city games discord uh Hopefully by next week, maybe we'll have a couple hundred people in there and uh, oh. yeah, chat it up with us. Um, True. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one.